Bionic Commando is one of the most innovative games for the NES. It's an action platforming game with no jump button. Instead, the titular Bionic Commando, a soldier named Lad, must navigate through the levels by grappling around with his bionic arm. It takes a bit to get used to it, but the game's levels are expertly designed to take advantage of this mechanic. Before it was on the NES, Bionic Commando was a 1987 arcade game. While the name is the same and the mechanics are similar, the levels in the NES version are completely different. Bionic Commando is a fun experience in the arcade, but it's completely linear and lacks the depth of the NES game. Bionic Commando was published by Capcom, one of the greatest arcade developers of all time. They weren't that big of a deal back in 1987, but would eventually release Street Fighter II, one of the biggest arcade hits since Pac-Man. Bionic Commando was the brainchild of Tokuru Fujiwara, the legendary developer that brought us Ghosts and Goblins. He would later go on to be a producer for almost every great Capcom game of the 80s and early 90s, including the Mega Man series, the Disney games, and even Resident Evil. But before he worked at Capcom, Fujiwara had worked for another popular Japanese gaming company, Konami. When he was at Konami, he created a game called Rockin' Rope in 1983. Just like in Bionic Commando, the player character in Rockin' Rope doesn't jump. Instead, he climbs to the top of the screen by tossing a rope at an upwards angle. As Fujiwara was wrapping up work on Ghosts and Goblins, he began working on another massive hit for Capcom an arcade game called Commando. In Commando, the player controls a soldier named Super Joe, who single-handedly mows down an entire enemy army. Sort of like Arnold in the movie of the same name, although they're unrelated. When Fujiwara was eventually asked to make a sequel to Commando, he instead decided to expand on his old rock and rope game. While the gameplay is mostly different, Bionic Commando's story does continue the original Commando. In this game, Super Joe has been captured, and it's up to the bionically enhanced lad to rescue him. Occasionally in the NES version you'll cross paths with an enemy convoy, and the gameplay for these short sections is certainly a nod to Super Joe's original outing. But Lad doesn't just have to save Super Joe, he also has to stop the enemy an evil organization called the Bads, from resurrecting their former leader, a monster they call Master D. I guess they can call him whatever they want, but it doesn't take a genius to recognize who he truly is, one of history's most notorious villains. That definitely ain't Charlie Chaplin. The original Famicom release was titled Hitora no Fukatsu Topo Shikoreto, which roughly translates to Hitler's Resurrection Top Secret. In that version, they certainly don't beat around the bush about who the bad guys are. This was all changed for the English language version, as this game was already pretty edgy for an NES title. There are numerous other changes from the Famicom version, like how enemies don't parachute out of nowhere when you're underground. Unlike the arcade version, the NES game is non-linear. You can fly around the map to many locations and complete them in the order of your choosing. When you complete a level, you're given a new gun or upgrade that will help you in the game, so it's sort of like Mega Man. There are also neutral areas, which are like the towns in Zelda 2. You'll find hidden upgrades here as well. Unfortunately, Bionic Commando wasn't a huge hit for Capcom when it released in 1988. But still, the game had a cult following of fans, and in 1997, Electronic Gaming Monthly magazine ranked it as the 32nd best console game of all time. Critics today still appreciate Bionic Commando's innovative approach to the platformer genre. When IGN created their list of the top 100 NES games of all time, they put Bionic Commando 
at number 9. The series did have a Game Boy release, and while the NES game hasn't seen an official release on a modern platform, Capcom would eventually reboot the series with Bionic Commando Rearmed in 2008. Modern gamers that attempt this game will have to deal with all of the challenges the NES is notorious for. You start out very weak in this game, and can be killed in a single hit. There are also platforming challenges that are absolutely acrobatic. Oh yeah, and you start out with zero continues in this game. If you want to continue, you'll have to earn it. But what if I told you how to beat every level? Even the optional ones? What if I told you the secret to powering up fast? And ways to make sure you never run out of continues? What if I told you secret shortcuts that can make even the most difficult levels seem easy? And what if I told you how to defeat every boss? Even Master D's Albatross? Well, on today's episode of You Can Beat Video Games, we'll learn all of that and more. If you're new to the channel, we're doing deep dives on retro video games and giving you the professional strategies that can be used by the casual gamer. Please make sure to subscribe and click the bell for notifications so you don't miss any new episodes. Let's get started. Alright, Bionic Commando. It does take some getting used to if you haven't played this game before. Not only do you not have a jump button, but you also can't change your trajectory when you're in mid-air. Unlike in a game like Mario, where you can kind of press left and right to subtly change where you're at in mid-air, you can't do that in this game. All you can do is change which direction you're facing. This is the map screen. We automatically fly to area 1, but we could use the transfer option to choose a different level. But we're going to pick descend, and we're going to enter area 1. It's not only the easiest area in the game, but it also gives us a very good upgrade for completing it, and it's mandatory, so it's a good time to go here. If you press the A button when you're not touching a direction, you'll shoot the bionic arm out at a 45 degree angle, but if you hold up, you'll shoot it upwards. And that's what you want to do to climb this tower, and then press up on this door to enter the communications room. These communications rooms are important for two reasons. The first is that every door in this game is a checkpoint, so if you die, you'll respawn at the last door you exited from. The second is you have to use the communicate option in this room, or there will be a big red barrier blocking you in this area and you won't be able to proceed. We can also choose the wiretapping option if we want to, and that'll let us see what the enemy is talking about and maybe get some hints, but the wiretapping option is never mandatory to use in this game. And once we exit the communications room, we're going to head over to the left. So drop off to the left. We don't have any health points yet, so we can't take any hits. Shoot that soldier, and then proceed over to the right, where we'll shoot the arm out at a 45 degree angle, and then you can press down to release yourself in midair. Come over here and duck to take out this soldier, and then shoot the arm upwards and go up through the platform, but start ducking immediately to take out this guy that's behind the barrel. Shoot up here and up again, and you'll see that you can't go up through here because there's some barrels, but watch what happens if you shoot out at an angle and then shoot again in midair. Now, if you catch in the middle of the barrel, you can go up through. That is a very important trick that will help you out a lot in the game. And I just collected enough of those bullets that the enemies drop to gain our first health point. So now we've gained level 1. Now we can take a hit without dying, pretty good. And we're going to go down this elevator to the second floor. I know the wiretap said that the elevators were dangerous, but that's just for the Japanese version. There's actually a trap elevator on the left side in there. I only entered the communications room here to create a checkpoint, and we're going to come over here and shoot the arm straight up, and then retract it by pressing A, and shoot that electrical barrier out from the top ceiling. These paratroopers will keep on respawning, so wait for an opening and then swing across, and immediately take out this guy who throws a bomb, and don't be near the bomb when it explodes. 
That item that parachuted down is random, and this time I got a shield. Now I need to turn to the right here because when I shoot the arm up, it actually shoots out behind your head. Sometimes you need to turn around and reposition yourself to go upwards. Up here, the enemies constantly respawn, so I'm going to take some time here and just keep killing enemies until we level up multiple times and have more health. This is a great spot to do this in. I'm going to speed the game up here too because this can take some time to do. You want to keep killing the enemies here and collecting the bullets until you have, I'd say, at least five health points. But do whatever you're comfortable with. If you're new to the game and you want to go to the max, which is eight health points, then by all means do that. It will take you 300 bullets to get to the maximum amount of health. But I'm just going to build up to five here. And also note that you can't do this in the Japanese version. In the Famicom version, the enemies don't parachute under the ground. I assume that the original developers didn't think that made any sense. So instead, you'll have a lot more enemies that come out of the doors. And this might not be the best place to level up for you in that game. Although I haven't thought too hard about where I would want to do leveling in that game as much. Alright, I'm going to collect this and now we're at 5 health, so I'm going to move on to the boss. If you want to come back here later, you actually can repeat any levels that you want in this game, so you don't have to worry about not being able to come back and powering up more if you want to do that later on in the game. Swing over, and here is our first boss. The Platoon. The platoon is nothing more than a bunch of standard enemies and whatever this guy is that waves a stick around. All you actually need to do is get to the right side and destroy the final computer. And that's how you defeat any boss in this game for the most part. If you stand right here, the enemies will just drop down off the end of that platform and they'll land right in front of you. So nothing will get you there and you can just keep shooting the final computer until it explodes. And that's it. We've completed area one and obtained the energy recovery pills, which is definitely a misnomer because it's actually a green potion. It's an awesome item though. If you press start while it's equipped, it will refill your health entirely, and you can use it once per level or per life. Area 13 is our first neutral area, and it's a completely optional one. If you shoot your gun while you're in a neutral area, well at least while you're not in a building, a bunch of guards will try to kill you, so definitely don't do that. Over here, if we enter this room, we can get a nice little reward. A single bullet. Yay. Go and collect your prize, and then head back out. And there is a slightly more important item in this area, but like I said, this one is completely optional. If we come up here, this guy will tell us that we've prepared some flare bombs for you. So if you enter this room, we'll be able to get those. All we have to do to get the flare bombs is duck down and shoot out the bionic arm. And we'll be able to grab them. Here's a trick, if you press start A and B in any of these horizontally side-scrolling levels, you can exit to the map screen. It doesn't have to be a neutral area, you can do it in the hostile ones as well. And we're going to head over here, and for now we're not going to go to area 4, instead we're going to go to another neutral area, area 15. Area 15 has an orange communicator that we'll need towards the end of the game, and it also has an extra life for us which we'll be able to collect, which is nice. Here we'll actually run into the leader of the bad guys, General Kilt, but it's a neutral area so we can't fight him here. In the next room, that's where we'll find the extra life, and you'll want to climb up to the ledge on the left. And then start walking to the right and shoot out the arm and you'll shoot it straight across. And that's probably the easiest way to get through that room, although there's plenty of ways to do it. Now here, you're going to have to shoot your gun to get rid of this wall. It is possible to get through without shooting your gun, but it's way more difficult to do it that way. 
in the Japanese version, you actually need a very specific gun to get through there. You need the three-way shot. But you can do it with whatever in this one. And I'm just going to press start A and B to exit. And we are going to transfer to area 5. But first, we ran into an enemy convoy. Which is good. This is how we get continues. So if you come all the way up to this wall, you can actually shoot over it. And you see when I destroyed that jeep, I got a continue credit. And there's going to be another jeep here. So for each one of these overhead stages you do, there's going to be enemies in it you can kill for continues. So never enter a dangerous level without continues. Just seek out a convoy, get a couple continues, and whenever you spend your last continue, just find another convoy and get some more. Never run out of continues. There's no reason for it. Area 5 is a tough one. This level is mandatory, and we're going to get the best weapon in the entire game here. So make your way up. Take out this guy from behind. Now that steel ball that you see, it actually can't damage you, but it can knock you around. And you see how I climbed up on top of that light? Whenever you're on top of one of those light bulbs, you'll slide off. If you're on top of it, you need to quickly launch your arm out to move up fast before you slide off. Now I'm just going to proceed upwards, drop off to the left here. Watch that this ball doesn't knock me off the edge, but it doesn't deal any damage. And just climb up and enter the first communications room. You need to enter the room, but you don't have to use the communicate option. Just entering the room is good enough. Position yourself here and then just start shooting the arm upwards. You want to go fast through that part and then swing over onto the bulb and press down to quickly dismount and land on the platform. Then you can just make your way up on the left side. There's a package there that you can grab. It could be something good. It could be a one-up, but don't put yourself in a bad position with the helicopter enemies. Just wait here on the edge until you have an opening. You need to shoot your arm out and then shoot it straight up to get onto the platform above. Make your way up and then off the side to the left. You can hit the helicopter soldiers with your arm and it will bounce them down a level, which could put them in range of your gun. Enter this communications room for another checkpoint and the enemies will have changed again. Now it's those paratrooper guys and they continuously spawn here. You want to come up and go all the way to the right then turn back to the left. Bounce off that spring and come up to the platform on the left. Be careful and take out any enemies. You may have to wait for one to come down from the platform above. And then spring off to the left and go straight up. And this is it. We've reached the boss, and the boss is very easy here. Stay on the bottom first, and walk over to the right, and duck right about here. Then you want to get up to the top, and you see those two blue ribbed poles? Just get between them, duck down, and just keep shooting whenever the guard robot gets to the top of the screen. It won't be able to hit you here, and it won't take long to destroy it. Once the guard robot is destroyed, you'll easily be able to take out the final computer behind it. So just go up in here, mash the B button, and the final computer will be destroyed. And with that, Area 5 is completed, and we have the best weapon in the entire game now. The Rocket Launcher. Now that we have the Rocket Launcher, we're gonna head back to a level we skipped before, Area 4. Area 4 is completely optional, so if you're just trying to beat the game, I actually recommend that you just skip this one. I'm going to equip our rocket launcher, and also the flare bombs that we got earlier. In here, it's going to be very dark, so if we have the flare bombs, we can use them to turn on the lights, but I'm not going to do it right away so you can see what I'm looking at. Just shoot your arm out here and hold to the right. Just hold to the right and you'll automatically detach, but you can see how the enemies are kind of dark and hard to see. Now once I press start, the flare bomb will shoot up and for the rest of the stage we'll be able to see. But it's not that difficult to see without the flare bomb, so you may want to bring the energy recovery pills instead. Make sure to use the communicate option in this stage or you will get blocked later head out. 
we're going to climb up here. Make your way over to the left and watch out for this guy. Wait for him to shoot. And there's a knife guy up here and then you want to duck down and take out that gun soldier. You can swing across here to the right. I wouldn't go up on top. That part's harder instead. What you want to do is just swing out and walk off here. Swing up. And if you just tap A a bunch of times when you're swinging around, you'll retract up and you can get on top of a platform. Catch that edge and swing over to the right. That's the easiest way to get up here. Head up, take out that soldier, and we're here at the boss. This is the bionic arm soldier, and he's the first boss we face that has a health bar that you can see underneath our own. But we don't actually need to kill him to be able to beat it. All we need to do is defeat the final computer, so I like to come over to the left and lure him over there and then drop off to the right, and now you can see the power of the rocket launcher. It only takes three shots to destroy the boss now. And for our trouble, we get the wide cannon, which is not very useful, so I'm just gonna show you a quick clip here so you can see what it does. It shoots out in this spread pattern, but there's almost no range at all, so you have to get really close to the bosses to kill them. And this is what it does in the overhead stages, which isn't terrible, but it's not as good as the rocket launcher. Well, now that we're back to the game, we're going to head to another neutral area. This one is neutral area 16. Area 16 is technically optional. There aren't any levels where if you don't have the green communicator, you'll be blocked from proceeding, but you won't be able to use the communicate or wiretap options to view secret messages without it. So I recommend that you enter this one anyway, it's not very difficult. We're just gonna head over, this guy says that the beta communicator is in here, which that's another name for the green communicator. And we just wanna go up to the top ledge, which we can do by facing to the right. And then we can just press start A and B to exit this one. And we are on to area number two, but it looks like we're gonna have to fight another one of those enemy convoys on the way over there. You'll get to see what the rocket launcher does in these spaces now. It just crushes the enemies. You can take out entire lines of soldiers. And I like to attack this guy from the side or from behind so I can grab the credits. You can only have a maximum of nine credits. Definitely don't touch the dark brown parts on the sides of this level. That will be instant death. All right, now for completing area two, we're going to get a protective item, and we don't have any of those yet. And don't forget to choose the green communicator before you come in here. The protective item is the pendant, and we'll get better protective items later, so feel free to skip this stage if you want. As soon as you enter this room, some slimes will start assaulting you. They don't deal you damage, but they can try to pull you down into a hole until you lift yourself up off of them with the bionic arm. Over here, you'll notice that the enemy has commandeered some construction equipment. So wait until that crane is backed up and then head up to the upper platform and shoot it. If the crane extends the chain on the front of it, that actually acts as a shield, so be careful of that. And swing over here to the left and climb up onto the top and then drop down to get into the communications room. That creates a checkpoint. And then you want to just drop down onto the side of this crane and shoot it. And we're going to bounce off here. Now continue to hold left as you shoot your bionic arm and make your way across the ceiling there. Just don't let go of left. And you should be good as long as you just keep shooting the arm out. Here we need to come down and grab this platform as we fall. That part is tricky and if you miss it, you'll need to climb back up and try it again. And here we are. The boss is the second platoon. The second platoon is not that much more difficult than the first, and it actually might be easier because we have the rocket launcher now. Just make your way to the right and put three rocket launchers on the final computer, and we'll have completed area two and obtained the pendant. Now, when you have the pendant equipped, the first enemy bullet that hits you won't deal you damage. So that's pretty nice. It's a little bonus, it doesn't do a whole lot, and it doesn't prevent damage from things like lasers. 
but it's not the worst thing to have. Area 3 is a mandatory one, and the difficulty ramps up a little bit here. The gray substance in front of you is quicksand, which is very dangerous for somebody who can't jump. I don't know, is, are his knees messed up or something? I don't know what's up with that. Come down here and use your bionic arm on the far right of that tree and then walk forward a bit and let go of the D-pad so you can shoot your arm out at a 45 degree angle and catch the branch on the right side. These spiders must be taken out with your gun and you need to be extremely careful of the man-eating plants. The ground will shake near them and that will indicate when they're about to pop up. Those are instant death. These bugs can be killed with your bionic arm, and you want to stay on the left side of these platforms to avoid the man-eating plants. Wait for them to disappear and then walk past. Drop down here, and then we're just going to hold left to walk across, and you'll end up over at the communications room. The communications room sets up a checkpoint, and you need to swing over to the right, so you're just going to hold right as you swing there. Get up onto this platform and then drop down and you need to catch this one as you fall to the left. That part's tricky, but this is trickier. Continue to hold left as you swing across here. It's not as hard as it looks. The guard robot is a super joke this time because we have the rocket launcher. He's destroyed in a single hit. Three shots of the rocket launcher will take the final computer out, but be careful if you're damaged because it does try to shoot at you this time. And that's it. We've completed Area 3 and obtained the Rapid Fire device. Now I'm going to show you what that does too. It allows you to just hold the button down and shoot, but it only works with your regular weapon. So it's another useless upgrade, and it's an accessory, so it takes the place of our energy recovery pills. Yeah, we're not going to be using that at all in this run. The next area we need to go to is area 6, and this is one of the most difficult areas in the game. It is a mandatory one. There is a wall here at the beginning that you need the rocket launcher to destroy, and then you need to mind that spike ball as you swing across here and then swing up to get the extra life. Wait for the spike ball, swing across. Make sure to take out this small robot on the right side before you go across here, and be wary of that spring platform. It may send you off to the right, so be ready to grab a green platform with your bionic arm. Make your way up here, and there's a soldier that can release drones over there on the side, so I took him out. And then come all the way up to the right and swing across using that bulb. Take out this drone soldier, and hold right as you swing across here, if you miss the edge of that platform, make sure to climb up on it with your bionic arm. And you're going to kind of perch on top of each of those little light bulbs for a second as you shoot at the higher bulbs to get across there. Swing on this bulb and then swing upwards. Swing out to the right from the edge and you're going to do the same thing there. Carefully grab the edge of this platform. In the Japanese version, there's like a pink platform that comes over and tries to knock you off. And here we're going to try to climb up through the boxes, just like we did in stage one. Bounce over to the left. So this part's tough, it's almost like spike ball Donkey Kong, but we can't jump. So use the bouncy platforms and try to cling to the top. Use the trick to swing it at an angle, and then grab into the purple boxes above to easily get yourself up. Now over here we're gonna just tap the A button to retract into this green platform and then swing back to the right when we feel safe and then back over to the left again up and use that upward momentum to swing through the purple boxes. That's all you have to do is when you're in midair you just try to grab out onto the higher platform and you'll be able to pull yourself up through. This boss is the bionic arm cyborg and he's dangerous, so we're not going to try to kill him. We're just going to wait until he's stepping backwards, facing to the right, and then we're going to jump up onto the platform and shoot at the final computer. It only takes three shots to take it out, and that's an easy way to get past him without getting hit. So only go up there when he's facing right and stepping backwards. We've completed Area 6 and gained the permit. 
If you're wondering what the permit does, we need that to enter neutral area number 14, which is a mandatory zone. But before we can go in there, we do have to do another one of these enemy trucks. We'll use it as an opportunity to grab a couple more continues, and these stages are pretty easy. In the Famicom version, they do put an invincible enemy at the very end to block the truck, so thankfully that was removed for the English version. Make sure that you equip your permit on the accessory page before you enter area number 14. It's the paper on the right side. In here, we're going to find the blue communicator, which is the fourth and final one we need. Watch out for this spiky ball. I don't know what that's doing in a neutral area. But through this door, we'll be able to grab that communicator. Until we have the blue communicator, the game will not let you go over to area 8. It'll say that we don't have enough power. Well, that's the last thing that we needed to do in here, but if you want to head over to the right into the second door, there is a treasure trove of 10 bullets in here. You need to grab them quickly, so use the pattern that I do here. Just swing across to the right. That's the best way to get them all, in my opinion. If you take too long, they will disappear. And that's it. Press start A and B to exit. And now we have completed everything on the left side of the map, and as long as you've done all the mandatory activities, you'll now be able to transfer to area number 8. Before we get up there, though, we will run into yet another enemy convoy, so let's quickly take these guys out. Quickly mow down these enemies, pick up any continues that you find. You can't have more than nine continues, but we're picking them up anyway. Head on through, and we'll just hit the truck at the end, and we'll be over to area eight. Now, Area 8 is definitely optional. The item that you get for completing it is not very good, but there is a really neat trick I can show you in here that will let you skip most of the level. So that could be a fun reason to come in just for that. Once you get inside, you want to climb up on the left side and just stay on the left, taking out any soldiers that you encounter as you move upwards. The door is going to be on the left, so you might as well just stay over here. You don't want to bounce off any of those spring platforms and end up falling back down to the bottom. So just make your way up to the top on the left. And once you go through the door, this is where that glitch is. So take out this enemy robot as soon as it moves down to the bottom. And then you're going to swing over to the right and in the air turn to the right and when you land, Press up and shoot your arm out at the same time. If you do it correctly, the game will think you went through the door, so when you go through the door that you came into the room from, it'll warp you straight to the boss. Now, of course, I'm going to show you how to beat the level the proper way, but that is a very interesting shortcut. It's called a wrong warp. Head through here, take out that robot, and make your way to the door on the right. This guy is pretty annoying. You want to stick to the ceiling, shoot the rocket launcher, and drop off right after you shoot it. He'll go back up to the top and get hit by the rocket launcher. Just go straight across here and through the door. In this room, there's a bunch of blue enemies that can throw bombs at you that parachute from the sky. Just make your way up as quickly as you can, taking out any of the enemies that are in your way. Watch out for this drone guy, he can be very annoying if you don't defeat him. And just keep heading up. Your goal is to get to the top and then head over to the left. Go over here, and here's the communications room, so enter that. Now hopefully you remembered to bring your blue communicator in here, or you're going to have to exit the level and come back. If you don't use the communicate option here, there will be a red door that will block you later. Once you've communicated, head down to the bottom and go through the door on the right. We're back at this small elevator room, so take the elevator down and head through the door on the left. This is back the way that we came, so get rid of this annoying enemy and go back through the door on the left side, where you'll have to kill that robot again, so kill him and head back through the door. And this is the large elevator room. 
So take that elevator all the way to the top, and you can see that door is blocked with the red barrier that I was talking about. We need to use two communications rooms in here, and this is the second one. So come in here and communicate, and that will finally remove the barrier, and now we can go to the boss room. However, there is another interesting trick here. Whenever you exit the room, you'll see an item is parachuting down from the sky. You can try to grab it with your bionic arm. Normally, those items won't come back, but if you enter this communicate room and come back out, you'll see that the item has respawned. Now, I couldn't get it there on the left side, but if we go back in and come back out again... Alright, this time it's on the right. You can try to collect this item as many times as you want. It could be extra lives, extra health, extra bullets, a shield, whatever you uh, need. So, once you're done with it though, head back through into the big elevator room, and it's time to face the boss, another platoon. This platoon's more difficult. Shoot at that shield guy and you see he's defended on the front. Try to make your way over to the right side and get behind some of these shield guys to defeat them. It still only takes three hits to defeat the final computer, so that's of course your goal. Just get onto that right platform and put three shots onto it. But as far as the platoon goes, that's a tough one. Now what are the iron boots? They let you do that. Whenever you're swinging, you can kill enemies. But they take the place of your energy recovery pills, so we're not going to be using them in this run. Now we're going to make our way down to neutral area number 17. This is an optional neutral area, but it's an interesting one. It opens up some different routes on the map screen. In here, we'll find a room over on the right where there's just one random enemy inside. This guy says they were waiting for me and we should come in. Weird. In here... At first, he'll talk a little bit of smack on us and say, like, oh, we got a little boy here. Yeah, but whenever you get close to him, he freaks out and he gives up everything. He's like, fine, fine. There's hidden paths between some of the areas. And then you can exit this. That's it. Now, in the Famicom version, the guy is a prisoner. And if you just start beating him up with your bionic arm, and I mean pound this guy in the crotch with it, like a lot of times, I'm speeding this up because you need to hit him so many times, I'm pretty sure that this violates the Geneva Convention. But if you do it enough times, he'll give you every gun in the game. But that only works in the Famicom version. You can even, you know, give him a couple more. I mean... In the Famicom version, these guys are legitimate Nazis, so their crotches get no sympathy from me. And check it out, you'll see now we have all the guns. And you can actually use that trick to skip Area 9 in the Japanese version. Now, before we go on to Area 9, which we do have to complete in the English language version, it is mandatory. If you go on those secret paths that just got opened up, there is always an enemy zone inside. And the first time that you go in there, or until you get the item, you'll be able to get an additional item, the helmet. The helmet is like an upgrade to the pendant that we have. Instead of protecting from the first single bullet that we get damaged by, the helmet will protect us from the first three. Big upgrade there. And we're going to make our way back up towards Area 8 and then down to Number 9. Area 9 is sort of like a garbage dump. Make sure to equip your helmet if you picked it up. And we're going to head into here. At the beginning of Area 9, there's a 1-up we can get, and I have a good trick for getting it. You'll come down to the ledge across from it, hold down and shoot your arm out, and then retract the arm by pressing A and continue to hold right. You'll kind of bounce off the wall and you'll pop up onto the ledge with the one up. So shoot your arm over and make sure to keep holding right. Now you're gonna make your way up here and then head across to the right. Here's another one of those annoying guys. Just remember, stick to the ceiling, shoot your rocket launcher and then drop down. 
don't use that spring platform on the left side. You just want to swing over it, but you'll need to use one over here to bounce up. Now we want to come up to the second tier here and wait for a platform and then drop onto it by pressing down. Wait here, and when you get past this orange wall, shoot your arm out, but don't go up yet. You want to wait for that little pink platform to drop down first. Then walk off and head back up. And over here, there's a lot of enemies that are continuously spawning, so if you want to try to gain some levels, that could be a good spot for it. Drop down and then make your way up on the far right. That's the easiest way to go. And then come up here, and you've arrived at the boss room. This boss is another platoon, and this one has some bomb launching guys, but it's much easier than the one that had the shield soldiers in Area 8. This platoon leader did let us know that Super Joe is not here, so we'll need to find him in another level. Finish off the final computer with three rocket launcher shots, and we will have finished Area 9 and obtained the three-way cannon. The three-way cannon is a mandatory gun that we will need to be able to enter area number seven. There's a wall, sort of like the one that blocked off area six, that can only be destroyed with a three-way cannon. But before we get over to area seven, we'll have to fight another enemy convoy. And just take them out. The three-way cannon sounds like it would be really good in these enemy convoy stages because it shoots forward and to the left and right sides but it only shoots forward in these overhead sections for some reason. I don't understand why, and it has a lot less power than the rocket launcher, and also less range. Alright, make sure to equip the three-way cannon. And it's time for Area 7. Once you've removed the wall, you can actually exit this area and come back to it with any gun that you want, but the three-way cannon is helpful for fighting some of the enemies in here although it is certainly lacking for fighting the boss. So if the boss gives you trouble, you may want to try this one with the rocket launcher instead, but you can see how handy it is against these enemies that have shields on the front. Make your way over to the right. It's possible to get up on the wall over to the left side of this, but it's very difficult to do and it's really not worth it. Go up here. And you can collect that item, but then I like to walk all the way to the right to lure these helicopters over there. And then I make my way back to the left and quickly climb up this left tower. If you take out those enemies, they respawn anyway, so you want to outwit them instead. And you just want to swing across on these gray blocks. Make sure to hold left the entire time and skip that one in the middle at the end where there's three blocks in a row. Over here is another one of those cyborgs with the bionic arm. If you have the three-way cannon, I like to drop down and shoot him as I fall whenever he's facing to the right and on the far left of the platform. That'll stun him for a moment and I can get a bunch of hits in on the final computer. Other than that though, just stay under the platform on the right side, wait until he's backing up and facing the right and that's your opportunity to pop up and get a couple hits in. Now, if you were using the rocket launcher, it only takes three shots, but with the three-way cannon, it takes significantly more. It is possible to get yourself into the top right corner and hit the final computer with the bottom shot of your three-way cannon, but that is extremely difficult to do and probably not worth trying. This strategy is a lot easier. And once he's beaten, You'll enter the room where Super Joe is being held. He's finally been rescued. Super Joe has a lot of information for us. First, he lets us know that the bad guys are planning on building some kind of doomsday laser. And they need information from their leader, a guy named Master D, to be able to complete the project. Now, we all know Master D is Hitler. So their plan is to, what, resurrect Hitler, ask him a couple questions, and then kill him again? Yeah, I'm sure he'll go for that. That makes total sense. He also lets us know that we can get a machine gun in Area 18 from his friend, a soldier named Destroyer Number 3. So that's where we're going to go next. The game tries to trick us here in Area 18. 
Super Joe said that his friend's name was Destroyer 3, and right away we encounter a guy named Destroyer 1 who asks us if we need a machine gun. Well, you need to say no to this guy. If you say yes, Destroyer 3 will disappear, and we'll be able to get a gun, but it won't actually appear in our inventory. It's like a fake gun of some sort. This is Destroyer number 2. We need to say no to him as well. This is Destroyer 3. So we can say yes to this guy. And then we can enter the room to the left to get Super Joe's machine gun, but don't get too excited about it. It's not as good as the rocket launcher. You can just grab it with your bionic arm. And that's the final gun in the game. I'll show you what it does. It reminds me a little bit of the wide cannon that we got in Area 4. It has a tighter spread pattern and a little bit better range, but the range is just not that good. And it doesn't three-shot the bosses like the rocket launcher does. So now that we have the final gun, we're going to make our way towards areas 10 and 11. We couldn't get up there before because we didn't have Super Joe. So make your moves and now that we've encountered an enemy convoy, I'll show you what Super Joe's gun does in these segments. He was the original commando, so his gun is pretty decent here. It has a nice spread pattern, the range isn't great, but the damage is adequate, so these segments are fairly easy anyway. If you want to choose Super Joe's gun here instead of the rocket launcher just to have fun with it, it's a fine choice. And we're gonna head up towards area 10, but before we get there, it looks like we got caught by another enemy, so I'm just gonna speed this up here, like... How many of these do we have to do? Okay. We can do Area 10 or 11 first. We can't get into Area 12 just yet until we complete those two. I'm going to choose 11 first because we actually get a decent item for finishing it. So we might as well have two stages to use that item with instead of just one. Alright, descend and we're going to use the orange communicator and select the rocket launcher of course as our weapon and make sure you have your energy recovery. Now, the game wants us to do this. This is the hard way. This is crazy. So, let me show you a better way that I came up with. Come down here and cross on this little platform, and then cross another one, and we're gonna take some damage here, but just walk off the edge, and you'll bounce a bit, and just shoot your arm out, and you'll be able to get up onto that platform. Personally, I think that's a lot easier. Whichever way you want to do it though, if you don't feel comfortable taking damage, you can try to do it the other way. But I think for three damage points, it's well worth it. All we're trying to do is get up on the platform on the far right here. So once you're up here, you want to get up. Watch out for this enemy. And there's a communications room hidden over here on the right. So definitely go in there to make a checkpoint because this next section is difficult and you can't just easily get through it like the last one. So you need to swing out, grab these higher platforms and make your way as far over as you can. Now if you mess up and you fall down, you may be able to get through taking a little bit of damage. So make sure to heal yourself by pressing start and using your energy recovery pills if you ever have less than three health. The boss is another platoon, and what you want to do is go over here on the left, and then stay behind this laser cannon, wait for it to come back again, and then head over to the right behind its beam and quickly make your way to the top, whip over to the left side and get to the top of the screen. Wait for the other laser to come back and take it out, and then get up onto this platform to take out the third laser cannon. Once all three cannons are gone, we can easily defeat the final computer. And you see that bullet hit me, but I have the helmet, so it just bounced off and didn't deal us damage. And that's it. Stage 11 is probably the most difficult stage in the game. So the next two are actually going to be a bit easier. We need to do stage 10 next, so we'll head up there. 
make sure that we select the orange communicator and we can equip the bulletproof vest that we got from the previous stage. The bulletproof vest, instead of protecting from three bullets, now protects from all bullets. Although if a salvo of bullets is coming at you, it will only block the first bullet and it won't block the second or third in a row. So be careful of that, and of course it can't protect you from the lasers here either. Once you get past those cannons, you need to swing out there and then swing upwards to get onto this platform. And then another tricky move, swing out to the right and then turn back and catch the platform on the left. Get up to the top here and swing across, and then pull yourself up by tapping A whenever you're in swing mode there but attached to that platform. Quickly get up to the top and watch out for the slime. The slime can actually help you down here. It's possible to get close to that spike and pull yourself towards the box, but it's probably easier to just let the slime carry you under and then quickly pull up to the platform above you. Head over here and enter the communications room. This communications room will set the position of a moving platform ahead, so head out to the left, shoot your arm out, and then hold left and immediately blindly vault over the spikes. The platform will be there and catch you. Head down here to the bottom, watch out for these small robots, and make your way to the lower left corner, where you can climb up quickly, and you'll find the boss room. The boss here is another guard robot, so that's another super easy boss. We can still take him out in one hit with our rocket launcher. And this thing will try to shoot at us, but the final computer goes down in three shots, so it's very easy as usual. And for our troubles, we get a one-up. Yay. And that's it. We can go to the final stage now, but before we do, we haven't visited Area 19 yet, so we'll go check it out. Area 19 is extremely optional. There's not a lot going on in here. At the beginning of Area 19, an enemy will attack us, and none of the guards seem to crack down on this guy, so I don't know what's up with that. He says that we're his 100th opponent, so he wants to kill us. I mean, I guess that maybe makes it okay for the neutral zone. Now, you can't shoot your gun without attracting the guards, but you can continue to hit that guy with your bionic arm until he falls off the edge. In this room, there's a small treasure trove of bullets, but at this point, we probably don't need them anymore. Make your way through the door, and up here, you can find an enemy in a room. And this enemy, you can shoot him with your gun, if you want to. It won't attract any guards, and, I mean, it's what he wanted. You can actually go in here and keep killing him again. Is he in some kind of weird Groundhog's Day situation? Well, in any case, if you need some extra bullets, you can keep killing that guy forever. And that's it. Let's head on back the way we came fight with one more set of enemies on the ground. I do think that the rocket launcher is probably better for these than Super Joe's gun, but eh, it's your personal preference. Head on up through. And we're going to transfer to Area 12. Now, Area 12, there are two ways you can go through it. I'm going to show you the shortcut first that abuses a glitch, and then I'll show you the actual normal way to complete it as well. The first glitch is fairly easy to perform, but the second one is very difficult, so you may need to use a combination of both strategies. Take this elevator all the way to the bottom, and take out these two guys on the left. There's another one of them on the right side, but you don't want to kill him. Instead, you want to put your arm up here, shoot outwards, and then swing over through the electrical barrier. What will happen is that guy will try to shoot you, and if you go through at the same time that he shoots, 
you can cross the barrier. All right, this guy, we need to wait for him to fire, go up under, and then swing through. You want to hit the barrier at the exact same time as the bullet, and that trick is super difficult to perform. I don't recommend trying it too many times. It took me a lot of practice, and I still can't do it consistently. All right. Here is the normal strategy for Area 12, and honestly, Area 12 isn't that difficult. We can pop into the communications room over here to make a checkpoint, and there's a door on the left side, but it's actually better to just go all the way to the bottom. You'll notice in this game, it's very easy to climb upwards, and it's harder to move downwards. You can't just go through platforms downwards. So you're just going to use your arm to head up here, and you want to go in this room in the middle. Inside we can take out this security computer, which will disable the barrier that we were swinging through when we were abusing that glitch. You can just go out the top, and that will take you back to the room across from the communications room. We will take the elevator down to the bottom floor. And you'll notice this time that the electrical barrier has been switched off. So you won't have to perform any tricks to get through now that it's turned off. And you can actually just swing on through it. Head on down to the next section. We can go into this door. And in here we have to actually go to the bottom of this electrified floor room. But make sure you let that steel ball roll ahead of you first. It won't deal you damage, but it can certainly mess you up. And you want to drop right behind the spark. Don't go into that boss room. It looks like that's the way to go, but that's actually a trick, and you'll have to fight a boss that you don't actually have to fight, so don't go in there. Those two platforms are very close to each other, so you can get hit on the top one. I did, but now we're down here in the bottom into the boss room. Just bounce up and shoot it a couple times, it's really that simple. And now all we have to do is climb back out the way we came, trying to avoid the electricity as best we can. So this platform's not electrified, so you can wait for a second, and then head out the door at the top. We can go down to the bottom, and down here you'll find that the electrical barrier has been turned off, so it's okay to kill this enemy on the right side. We don't need his assistance to swing through the barrier anymore. And really, trying to do that second barrier skip is so difficult. It's probably a lot easier to just turn off the electricity the normal way. And getting across the ceiling here, you just want to shoot your arm out and hold right. Use very small strokes and that'll get you across. In here, General Kilt has Hitler in some kind of Star Wars Bacta tank, but he has completed the Albatross anyway. He was able to finish the Albatross super laser, so now he's just gonna not resurrect Hitler. Well, yeah, this was a really stupid plan. Hitler uses his Dark Jedi Force Lightning to kill General Kilt, because that's how Hitler thanks people. And now he's like, oh yeah, I'm going to take over your army and rule the world. Yeah, here's a good piece of advice. Never, ever try to resurrect Hitler. That's the stupidest idea ever. If there's anybody that needs to stay dead, it's Hitler. And this is the final boss. The rockets fire from left to right and then the one on top goes off. You want to wait until it's moving to the left and then you grab up on the fourth rocket on the right and once you're on top of it you quickly latch on to the top of the albatross and shoot as many rocket launchers as you can into its weak spot. You may have to do it two, three, or four times to finish it off but it's not that difficult of a final boss, all things considered. Once you've defeated the Albatross, you'll come through into this room and this guy named Hal will give you a bazooka. Now it's okay, if you die, you will come back here, even if you continue. Even if you leave this area to go collect more continues. 
you'll be okay. But you need to swing over and shoot right at the glass on the helicopter. And if you miss it, you'll die and lose a life and you'll have to try it again. But you definitely want to make sure that Hitler stays dead. So you get him right in the face and watch his head explode. Now this base will explode in 60 seconds. So we need to quickly get out of here. This section is not that difficult. But if you run out of lives here or mess it up, you may have to redo that shot on Master D's helicopter. When you come up here, this cyborg will try to mess with you. You want to climb up on the left side and shoot your arm out as you're running to the right. That will let you swing over to that platform on the right, and then it will be very simple to just get out of here. And that's it. We've stopped Hitler's resurrection, rescued Super Joe, and completed Bionic Commando. All we can do now is sit back, relax, and enjoy the cheesy ending. In classic Nintendo fashion, we now get to watch the enemy base explode. Reminds me a lot of like Mega Man or Ninja Gaiden. And out of the ashes, a helicopter with Lad and Super Joe. I find it very strange that in the next scene, they show Lad holding a rope when it seems very obvious that he would be grabbing the runners of the helicopter with his bionic arm. I mean, like, that's what he does. Well, in any case, everyone is safe, and we're returning now. Well, I hope this video was able to help you destroy the albatross and send Master D back to his grave. If it did, make sure to give it a like and make sure to subscribe for more videos because there will always be more bad guys trying to resurrect evil dictators from the past. And that's why we'll be back again next week with another video game you can beat. Thanks for watching.